Okay, we're going to use red yarn for the waist yarn pouch, The open, what we're going to knit, because what we're knitting is a pouch that will go down there. And we're using red so you can see the difference. Now first I'm going to pick up some stitches here. You can pick them up and knit them as you go, but I'm in the mood to just pick them up and put them on this needle. That's what I feel like doing. Okay. So what you want, see so you have to pick some up right here or you'd have a big gap. You can pick up however many you like. In this case we are felting, so we can get away with most anything in the world. I'm going to go for this one. What we don't want is to pick up something like this that makes a big hole. You want to look for things that are nicely anchored, even if you have to drop down a stitch or two. Okay, I'm going to take those. Well, that one looks like it's making a hole. I'm not going to take it. I'm going to take this. I like that better. Okay, and I'm putting them on the one that had only eight. I feel sorry for it. Okay, I'm going to give some to that one that only has eight. Well, actually, I put on two, so now it has ten. These are, you have to close the corners. This will not change the, it being disproportionate. There's one. That looks good. And let's see. See, I wouldn't take this, because look at that hole it makes. But I might take that lovely little thing. Okay. I think I've added, I have added about five. I think I have 13 now and 16 here. So now, I can start here or here, but I'm going to start knitting around. Now, something you might have noticed or might not have, I do not have the same size needles. This is a kit, a Denise interchangeable kit, so I can switch these. I'm going to make sure I have the large size, the one I want to use to get gauge, in this hand. And um, I only have to make sure that's so once. Watch, you'll see. And the reason is because the needle in the right hand makes gauge, the other one doesn't. And if you have just one Denise kit, you can make yourself a pair of circular needles to knit in the round with with one kit because you only need the gauge size in your right hand. You can have a much smaller needle, as I do, in the left. And it makes your stitches flow along awfully quickly and smoothly. Okay, we're at the end of that one. Now here I want to switch these, and the reason I'm switching them is because they just happened not to be in the right place the first time around. But you'll see as we continue, they'll be just right. Okay, big one in my right hand, because that's the one that's making gauge. Knitting around. And all I have to do now is knit around and around and around for a while, and I will have a pouch. And I will be pausing the camera in a minute, but first I just want to show you how true it is that once I've got the needles behaving in terms of where the big end is, that they, there's my end there, that they will continue to be right where I need them. I'm pulling my tail down inside. Okay, so you notice I didn't have to switch anything except come to this needle. And I'm going round and round. So one kit can give you a pair of matched circular needles for knitting in the round. As long as you put two big tips on the ends that end up in your right hand, two small tips on the ends that end up in your left hand. See, whoops, wrong needle. And if you don't know how to knit with two circular needles in the round, the way you do it is each needle has approximately half of the stitches that you have in your round. And each needle knits only the stitches it has. Notice the pink needle here is knitting the pink stitches or the stitches on the pink needle. The blue needle will knit only the stitches on the blue needle. Okay, I'm going to pause now and come back when I've knit enough of this to show you that indeed we have built a pouch with disproportionate edges. Okay, I've been knitting long enough. As you can see, I have quite a bit done there. Now I'm going to show you what this would look like if it were done, but of course this is just a sample piece. It isn't, it's going to be unraveled when this movie is over. As a matter of fact, I'm going to push the pouch to the inside. Now here's where we start. Let's see, the yarn's coming out, but you'll have to ignore that. Here's where we had our eight stitches. We ended up with eight knitted stitches there as well. This did not get bigger. Up here, clearly, up here, it got bigger. There's our original eight. And there's our biggerness. 
Okay, so this is a pouch. It's going to pooch out here. Can't really see because everything's in the way, but there it is. I'm going to pause for a minute and go get this Christmas stocking and so you can see better. But as you can see, but I want you to also see, you get rather nice edges, don't you? This is a nice technique. We're felting in this case, so we don't need to be particularly nice. But it comes out rather well. And then you would close the bottom of the pouch, of course. Here's the stocking before felting. I can show you what this looks like. We're using a hand-painted yarn. So we've got different colors in here. It's not just pure red. We get these beautiful stripes. OK, it's Cascade Pastaza paints, by the way. Here's where we had eight. Here's where we had 15. That's pretty clear, isn't it? And there's our pouch. Same thing up here. Eight, 15. There's our pouch with the hand paint colors. Very nice. OK, and here's the finished result right here. Much nicer, as felting always is. 8, 15, 8, 15, and there's our pouches. And there it shaped the sock. If you want the pattern for the sock, there's what it looks like up top. Down there, it's got a nice feel to it, too. Go to knittersreview.com, knittersreview.com, and this will appear in the last week of, Feb of excuse me, of November 2007. Um, the pattern will appear there, and this video supports the pattern. And if you aren't already a subscriber of KnittersReview.com, I think you probably want to because it's free, it's fantastic, it's beautifully written, and you never know what you're going to learn week to week. And um, I have been reading it for seven years myself. Okay, see? And see, but our waist yarn, disproportional waist yarn, allowed this to get bigger and then this to get bigger yet to make the sock come out like that. So it's basically a disproportional waist yarn architecture for socks. Not suitable for wearing, but most suitable for Santa, Rudolph, and little boys like my grandson Charlie. I hope you'll enjoy it.